we welcome refugees and asylum seekers to Darlington. We have drop-ins, one for our sanctuary seekers, that's asylum seekers, uh, one for Afghan refugees who've come over on the Arab scheme. And we've now set up a hub for the Ukrainian families who've arrived through the hosting scheme and or through, also through the family reunion scheme. Well, and then we, we also have a meeting for the parents and um, explain really basic things that they didn't, what we were finding was they didn't know. They didn't know that if their child was ill, they had to phone the school. Um, they didn't know about parents' evenings and, you know, things like that. So we, we support parents as much as we can. If they need help at parents' evenings, we go and help them. We also offer uh, homework support to the families. And that's not, it's not necessarily from, from an expert person. They're from the language team, but they really model what a parent would do to help their child. In COVID, that was really difficult because a lot of the single men uh, got very depressed and finding activities for them to do and our drop-ins had to close we, we a lot of the stuff we did remote was remote and that's just not not hitting the, the spot for some people um, so we, we've had some really serious cases of uh, attempts of suicide from from the asylum seekers actually um, and engaging with mental health has been another tricky thing because of uh, cultural norms. Schooling has been fine. It's, it's, it's been one of the positive things, to be honest. In terms of the health service, I think it's just definitely not coping. It's not coping at all. There, there are, first of all, they can't find Ukrainian interpreters to interpret with them appointments. There is one, I mean, the family I've been working with today, they just want to go back to Ukraine. And that's, that stems from the mother's health problems. Um, she, she's actually been able to get an MRI scan in Ukraine quicker than getting one here. 